My name is Laura Hanna, and I am graduating from college this quarter. And not only am I graduating from college, but I have a full, real adult job. I am so, so excited that I get to jump into a full-time job right after college, but in order to explain how I got here, I need to start with my freshman year and the first ever class I took through honors called Civic Power. I took this class kind of out of necessity. I was registering for classes really late and all the classes that I thought I wanted to take were filled, so I was scrolling through the honors portfolio of classes and Civic Power showed up. And that was it. Just the word civic power, there was no description, no instructor, and that was all I had to go off of. Luckily for me, civic power was kind of straightforward and it had to do with politics, which I was a politics major, and so I just decided why not? Why not explore this? And I'm really, really glad that I did. I learned so much in this class that it pretty much set my path forward for the rest of college. I was really excited to learn about how power and civics and citizenship really came together and how narrative and other structures really informed power and culture in America. Mm -hmm. This was just a really truly fun class for me to take and it also introduced me to my first boss, mm -hmm. Eric Liu. He was the instructor of this course and also the head of a civic nonprofit called Citizen University. I was really, really inspired by their mission statement to bring powerful citizenship all over the country and especially by something called better arguments which was their idea that you can argue with people that don't agree with you and you don't agree with them but you can do it with empathy and with respect so that there isn't animosity there isn't divisiveness and i was just really intrigued by that so i asked for a volunteer opportunity and eric countered with an internship which i was so so excited to take now this was kind of a risk I had never had a job before and this team took me in and as you can see in some of the pictures below it was a relatively small team and just kind of threw me into the deep end and just hoped that I could swim and I did. I learned how to organize, I learned how to manage, and I learned how to help put together a really really great event which was their national conference. It was just so inspiring and so much fun to be a part of this team and put together this really great event and see how it affected people. And I just fell in love with civic education, with civic nonprofit work, and with event work. And I knew that this was something that I wanted to continue to pursue. Unfortunately, I had to end the internship as I had a really, really great opportunity to study abroad in Berlin, but I knew that I wanted to return. I just really identified with the mission statement and I knew that that wasn't the end of the story for me. So like I said, I studied abroad in Berlin and this was through the honors program and I am so happy that I got to do this and that the honors program provided me this opportunity because in Berlin I learned a lot about how politics and the narrative that politicians are they they say and the stories that they say don't necessarily reflect the facts on the ground. I interned at a refugee camp where I got to talk to people who are working there about how Angela Merkel who this is at the height of the Syrian refugee conflict, was saying that she wanted to take all these people in and wanted to be open. And while that was a sincere wish, it was very hard for one person at the top to then influence people all over the country. And there was a lot of still prejudice and racism, but they weren't talking about it because there wasn't a word for racism in Germany. It was very difficult to talk about these things because of its connection to Nazism, the Holocaust, and the World War II. And I just found it really interesting how history and stories and even missing words could really influence culture and influence society to the point where they weren't really able to talk about the racism that refugees were experiencing. This really, really stuck with me and I knew I wanted to explore that more and I don't think I would have gotten this opportunity if I wasn't studying abroad specifically with honors. So in my sophomore year, I decided to explore this concept just a little bit more and I took strategy in war. It was a really, really cool course where I got to explore something called political psychology. Now I mentioned I was a politics major, but I was also a psychology major and this class is where I got to see them both interact in a way that made sense for the first time through something called political psychology. Political psychology is this idea that we are human and humans take part in politics and so politics are influenced by psychological mechanisms and kind of exploring how especially in wartime and in times of conflict, stra strategy is influenced by psychological factors. I was really, really interested in this, and especially coming from my experience of narrative and how narrative influenced politics and how politics and 
does and does not influence the public. I was really interested to see how this would also translate in the strategy and war class. And specifically, I was interested in the Israel-Palestine conflict. So I decided to write a paper on ethnic conflict and its progression to civil war for Israel and Palestine, which was definitely way more than I could chew for a sophomore in college who had just started to explore these topics. In fact, I was panicking at 3 a.m. the night that it was due and I emailed my TA just begging for more time and I just knew that I needed to do this paper justice. And I did end up submitting a paper that I was proud of, but there was something missing there. I wanted to do more. But to understand why a sophomore in college could ever conceive of writing a paper like this, something so complicated, you have to understand where I was working at the time, which was the Middle Eastern Student Commission. This was, at the time, something that I thought would connect me to the Middle Eastern co community at the University of Washington. I was really connected to my community back home in the Bay Area, and I really wanted to find another community here in Seattle. This was not as simple as what it ended up being because I was just pushed into some of the most, one of the most mentally and emotionally challenging experiences I had in college. I was really pushed to identify with my identity and my beliefs and really come in contact with tribalism and politics that are really embroiled in the culture. And granted, there's a lot of joy in our culture, but there's also a lot of issues. And this really just kind of pushed me, especially into the sphere of, of really coming to terms with the Israel-Palestine conflict and what it meant to me. So with that, in mind with the experiences that I was having with the Middle Eastern Student Commission and with the paper that I had attempted to write in strategy and war, I knew that I had to try this again. I knew that there was something there that I really wanted to dig into, especially with the things I was learning in honors about narrative and how it affect culture. And I just knew that there was more to it. So I committed to writing a thesis on it. And I was so, so excited about this, but I knew that I had a lot of work to do. So. I contacted my, press, my professor of strategy and war and I wanted to talk to him a little bit more about how political psychology and Israel-Palestine would connect and create a more in-depth thesis topic. And so I worked with him with my spring quarter. He then went on sabbatical. So for my fall quarter, I met my advisor, Professor Leora Halperin, and she helped me really come in contact with the history and what it meant and the history of the conflict so that I can make sense of the narrative and the political psychology pieces in conjunction with the history pieces, and I started to create a theory that I could work with. So this is my thesis proposal. It had a lot to do with symbolic politics, which is the idea that symbols and myths and narratives affect politics, which then affect how people act in conflict. And especially symbols and myths really create a separation and division between the two sides that become filled with animosity that then breed conflict. So I was working with that when I went to, through my winter quarter, this actual quarter of senior year, I was writing this thesis and researching this thesis, and I have to say it was the hardest thing I have done, and I'm so, so proud of the results. I am just really glad that I decided to pursue this. I am way more comfortable in my identity, in my relationship with this conflict, and in my theory, and I also feel like I finally have been able to just get all the ideas that I had together from taking my honors courses, from my political science courses, from my psychology courses, and just mesh it into one thing that really dissected an issue that I care about and that is personal to me. There is too much in this thesis to fully explain in this presentation, but I am very, very proud of it, and it is on my portfolio for people to read if they so please. Um, but I am just really glad that I decided to pursue this, and I know I couldn't have done this if it wasn't for the classes that I took with honors informing the other classes that I took along the way in political science and psychology. So with this paper finished, and I just submitted it last week, and I'll be defending it next week, I feel like the four years of college have really just come to a pinnacle point and I have just submitted this huge thing and I'm done. And I am so excited about it. This is the perfect way for me to end college. So obviously my question is what's next? So in order to explain that, we need to have a return to civics. And that means it's a return to civic university or citizen university. I was so excited in my summer before my senior year to return to Citizen University again, having learned and grown for the last two years and to continue an internship with them as their program and communications intern. It was so exciting to return to them and to really experience the joy and see even how their ideas of narrative and power were influencing my thesis and how my thesis could vice versa influence our understanding as an organization of narrative and power. 
we just, I clicked with the organization again. And when my supervisor decided to leave Citizen University, she elevated me to her position. And so I am now Citizen University's Youth Program Coordinator. And the job that I mentioned at the very beginning of my presentation is this job. I am so, so excited to come back to Citizen University as a full-time employee and just really jump into this job. I joke with people all the time that I'm part-time civic educator, part-time event coordinator, part-time mom to 22 teenagers as I am a youth coordinator and working with teenagers across the country to help them with their grassroots organizing movements. I could not have pictured a better next step for me. I know that in the future I want to be a lawyer, but I knew that I needed to give myself time between college and grad school basically to really explore other interests and to explore different parts of me that I knew that I wanted to. And this was definitely the perfect way to do this. I am so glad I have this opportunity to return to an organization that really just gives me a lot of joy and hope and really helps me grow in myself and in my strengths and helps me explore my, my ideas expand on my concepts of narrative as it applies to the U.S. and also expand on my idea of citizenship. So I am so excited to give Citizen University everything I have again as a full-time employee and also help kids across the country make a difference in their communities. Thank you so, so much.